Hi. For this lesson, you're going to need your Theme Zero Part 2 booklet. And we're working on pages 2 and 3 of that booklet. This lesson is all about uh, Pangaea. That's a word you may have heard of before. It's a supercontinent that existed uh, from about 300 million years ago through to about 200 million years ago. It's really important part of our geological history. But if we're going to understand that, we need to think about um, what Pangaea was like. So this lesson is all about reconstructing that ancient continent. For this, you're going to need some scissors, some glue, and some coloured pencils. Okay, let's go. This is a map we're fairly familiar with. It's a map showing uh, the current distribution of the continents, where they're found around the world. The light grey shaded area is um, the continental part of the seas. So it's where the, the sea is very shallow and there's actually continental crust underneath it. If you've watched the introductory video, you'll know that the map of the world that we see now isn't as the world has always been. Continents have uh, grown over time. Continents have been moving around the Earth's surface because of plate tectonics for thousands of millions of years. So actually what we're seeing now with this world map is, I suppose, like the final frame or a freeze frame would be a better way of thinking about it, um, in a film. This is just the situation that currently exists. It wasn't like that in the past, and it won't be like this in the future. I want us to look at how it was in the past, to give us the situation of the spread of continents and oceans that we have today. Staple to your booklet, you'll find a worksheet with these continents and some geological information on. What I'd like you to do is to cut out each of these continents and then piece together the jigsaw that was Pangaea. How can you put these continents together so they form one supercontinent? Now, we can't just do that randomly. We do need to think about the geological evidence that there is for how we put these together. Things I want you to think about include the age of the rocks. These numbers on the edges of the continents show the dates of rocks that we can find in two different continents. So we need to be looking to match those up. We also need to think about the fossils that are found. I've given you um, data here on two different types of fossil, fossils, an animal and a plant. They need to match up as well, because they would have grown or lived in similar places. We need to think about some of the glacial evidence as well. If we have, uh, during the time of Pangaea, there was a large glaciation. The glacial deposits and, the, importantly, the direction that the glaciers were moving, they need to match as well. And finally, there's the fit of the continents, how these things actually fit together, and thinking about as well where they are now. Continents can't jump over each other uh, to get to their present positions. They need to um, move apart from where they were during Pangaea. For those of you that move on to the Digging Deeper, this is uh, the continent uh, called Ur. 
That's about a good name for it. We don't know a great deal about uh, Ur. Why is that, do you think? Okay, it's time to press pause now. Get out the scissors and glue and see if we can reconstruct what Pangaea was like 250 million years ago. Okay, let's see what you've come up with. So this was the handout uh, that I gave you. If you cut these out and try and piece them back together, you may well get something that looks a bit like this. You could probably get your continents maybe a little bit closer together so they properly fit uh, in next to each other. But what you're looking at here is a map of Pangaea. If we think about how these continents have then moved into their present directions, how Pangaea actually broke up, you can see we have continents moving um, in all sorts of directions, some moving together. India, for example, uh, moved very quickly and crashed into, into Asia. Uh, Africa and South America have moved apart. Europe and North America uh, have moved apart as well. Antarctica has moved as well over the southern pole, having a massive effect on the world's climate. But that's for another lesson. This is an interesting take on uh, the Pangaea map, as if we had... Uh, all the modern countries uh, in Pangaea, so we can see where they are. But there's something missing. The question perhaps we should ask ourselves is where's Iceland? Why isn't Iceland marked on this map? Have a think about that. Why do you think that is? And finally, this continent of Ur. A slightly mysterious place. What was it that makes our reconstruction of Ur so vague? What do you think the limitations are on the geological evidence? Is its age an important factor? And if it is, why? What is it about the fact that Ur existed such a long time ago that means we have very, very limited evidence in order to be able to reconstruct it. Okay. As we look at sunset uh, over Table Mountain in South Africa, a place that broke apart from uh, its sim very similar rocks um, on the other side of the, now on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean in South America, it's worth reflecting for a moment on the immensity of this change. The fact that these continents, that sometimes we can fall into the trap of thinking of as fixed and permanent, are in this constant state of movement. As geologists, we need to be aware of this constant, slow gradual change and the massive effect that can have over large periods of geological time. Okay. Next time we'll be exploring another aspect of um, this plate tectonic activity. I'll see you then.